At the dawn of a new century, the world celebrated its survival of Y2K. The fear of the end of the world as a result of a computer bug had not materialized. However, our local economy suffered with the collapse of the energy giant Enron. The United States once again elected a new president, George W. Bush. It was a controversial election where we all learned about Floridian chads. Major natural disasters plagued the first several years of the new century. Across the globe, an earthquake in the Indian Ocean created a tsunami that took the lives of almost 300,000 people. Closer to home, we saw our neighbors in New Orleans lose 80% of their city because of flooding caused by Hurricane Katrina. Previous to that, in our own backyard, Tropical Storm Allison devastated the city of Houston. The Texas Medical Center was impacted and years of research were lost because of the flooding caused by the storm. The Space Shuttle Columbia exploded over Texas and Louisiana as it re-entered Earth's atmosphere, killing all seven astronauts. On September the 11th, 2001, we watched in horror as the United States came under a terroristic attack, something our generation had never seen or witnessed before. On a lighter side, in pop culture, Kelly Clarkson won the first American Idol, and in Houston, we finally had our new football team, the Houston Texans. iTunes was launched, and Harvard University students began using a social media platform called Facebook. We saw the creation of YouTube, Apple introduced the first iPhone, and Pluto was demoted and no longer considered a planet. During this time, we witnessed two miracles, a white Christmas that stretched from Sugarland all the way to Corpus Christi, followed by the Houston Astros making it to the World Series for the first time. At Parkway from 2001 to 2008, Pastor Paul continued to be our spiritual leader, but we saw several changes in other areas of our staff. We tried out worship leaders after Wayne left until we found a good fit with Asher Lewis. The youth enjoyed working with several leaders, including Chris Sands, John Ferguson, Tim Ganger, Jason Johnson, and Scott Rawlings. Nelda Reed was instrumental in starting our children's ministry, followed by Beth Murphy and Shannon Vocal. Valerie Throgmorton was our care minister. We continued with community outreach activities, such as car washes, Christmas gifts for the needy, trunk or treat, and cookie decorating at the Harvest Festival. We added some new outreach programs, mission trips to Mexico, uh, work in the Four Corners area, and a Christmas activity called Drop and Shop, where neighbors in our community could drop their children off at our church and go Christmas shopping. The children en enjoyed visits with Santa, decorating projects, and refreshments. During that time, we also began our involvement with Family Promise, housing and feeding the homeless at our church. Fellowship activities also continued, mother and daughter banquets, men's and women's retreats, progressive dinners. Our youth continued to meet regularly with expanded programs like rock climbing and trips to Laser Zone. They also started attending a youth retreat in Florida called Big Stuff. We initiated our recognition of graduating seniors. Children's programs continued with BBS each summer and a junior choir was formed. Promised Land, our Sunday school for children, was expanded. While Parkway was growing in attendance, we were also poised to grow physically by starting the first phases of our campus plan. This became a challenge because of the changes in the world around us. Parkway reacted by being the spiritual center of our community. When the training rains of Tropical Storm Allison devastated our city, members of Parkway were there to help by volunteering their time for cleanup and rebuilding. As things were getting back to normal, the terrorist attacks on our country on September the 11th, 2001 stopped us in our tracks. Parkway as a church participated in many prayer vigils and members hosted prayer gatherings in their own neighborhoods. A few years later, members of Parkway stepped up once more to aid our neighbors when Houston opened its arms to many of those left homeless by Hurricane Katrina. Our youth were on the front lines of rebuilding homes in New Orleans by participating in a program called World Changers. In spite of all of these obstacles and the collapse of Enron in October 2001, we successfully completed phase one of our building campaign called Building on Faith. After raising more than $1.1 million, we broke ground on our worship center on January 20, 2002. Our first Sunday worship service in our new worship center was on December 15, 2002. 
A formal dedication followed on February 16, 2003. Parkway member Terry Crump, supported by her husband Walter, worked tire tirelessly to open a Christian bookstore that would be housed in our new worship center. On the footsteps of our success with Building on Faith, we started a new capital campaign called Relationship Building to fund the construction of our ministry center that would en enable us to expand our outreach in the community. On March 4, 2007, we broke ground on this new building. The grand opening celebration was February 10, 2008. As 2008 came to a close, we saw leadership changes in the world, in our country, and right here at home. After 49 years in power, Fidel Castro stepped down as Cuba's dominant leader. Barack Obama was elected as the United States' first African-American president. And the founding pastor of Parkway United Methodist Church, Paul Kleins, bid us a fond farewell as he became the lead pastor at First Methodist West Chase.